This will be the first start in many moons. And it's cold start. It was only, I don't know, maybe minus seven last night, so it shouldn't be too bad. This truck has not really left the shop yard in like 17 years. See if she's gonna fire. <laughs> She sounds grumpy. <laughs> to all of you, this probably sounds just like every other old diesel truck, but to me, there's a very specific sound with this particular truck because this is my dad's old truck. I've wanted this thing for years and it's going to play an integral role in this winter's plans, but there's a ton of work to do before we can really dive into that. Let me fill you in on some details. This is our shop yard, and it's essentially what is left from a pretty interesting business venture my father and grandfather had in the early years of my life. It was kind of, even as logging goes, a unique little outfit. Uh, smaller machinery, we did a lot of faller select work, window dressing for the mills. If you were close to subdivisions or uh, on the side of a recreational lake, say, and they wanted to harvest timber, they often send our little outfit in there. We could remove 20, 30% of the timber, weasel down narrow trails with that machinery. And when we were done, it looked actually kind of like a park. I lived in a subdivision on five acres and I didn't feel it would be right to build a shop there because, you know, the noise early in the mornings and stuff like that. So I shopped around and this 62 acre parcel was close to home and I purchased it and immediately built a shop. And that's all that was on here for the first many years that I owned this property. I bought out the logging company and I needed a shop for myself at that time. And uh, especially with logging trucks involved, you have to have a shop. That The bush machinery I could have got by without, but with logging trucks I needed a shop. So I bought the 62 acres and built a shop. It worked great for a lot of years. Eventually that played out for us because the push was on to salvage all that beetle kill pine out west and without all the automated machinery and everything just using chainsaws still and stuff we pretty much became outdated and uh, that's when I had to eventually step out of the business and that's when that truck got parked. <laughs> Throughout my entire adult life, this has sat pretty much vacant. So I've been able to learn how to fix things and build things and wrench. And it's big enough that I can fit the motorhome inside. It's not comfortable. It's not cozy. It's not luxury by any means, but it's free. And it's critically important to this winter's build plans. So let me take you for a tour inside. Welcome to Mikasa. This winter, we're not going south. We're staying here and building an expedition truck, an overlander. So this side of the shop will remain living quarters in the motorhome. This side of the shop will get all cleared out and this will become Build HQ. Now, without further ado, let's get to some shop cleaning. The shop has sat for three years now without any sort of maintenance. The boiler needs a new pump. I have to get three months worth of firewood and all my stuff that's been sitting for years has to get organized, 
given away, sold, or thrown away. You guys know what's in here? There's a cooler full of sand. Why do we own something like this? Here we go. Put some insurance on the old gal. Ready for her first tootle down the highway. What I can tell you immediately, this front end needs some serious attention. Pretty sloppy, but she'll make her to the dump. Operation Dump Run, wildly successful. Slight change in plans today. The perfect camper came up for this truck. I wanna go take a look at it before there's too much snow. I'm not meant to be a car owner because they just can't handle the way I like to drive them. Just trying to get a new bearing in here before we go because I think she's gonna pile up pretty soon. This is definitely the wrong size. <laughs> Accidentally ripped the bumper off. Looking at a chipped windshield coming up here. ASAP. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Wow. Moonlit road, stretching far from Search high and low with the trees and rope. So Quick pit stop, checking the road conditions. Can confirm, pretty slick. <laughs> much of an improvement today but at least the plows should have been out so we're gonna go buy the camper and then start m making our way back home and then I don't know rent it maybe rent a truck to pick it up we'll see what happens then as much as I hoped they would the road conditions did not improve throughout the week but lucky for me my dad has brand new winter tires on his truck so he's taking the day and we're making the trip to get her home off to an unfortunate start here. None of the lights work, so we fashioned up a pretty fancy wiring harness. It will do the trick. Let me tell you guys a little bit about this camper and why I chose this. This is a 1987 Bigfoot. It's an 11 foot camper, which is a little bit bigger than you would typically go with an expedition truck. But I'm not building this rig to do little trips here and there. I'm building it to live in for months at a time in remote off grid areas. I wanted an older Bigfoot because it's solid fiberglass. Living in the motorhome for the last three years, I am sick of dealing with water leaking inside. And this thing, being solid fiberglass, there's no way that it can leak. 
and it will be nice and toasty warm in there. This unit has bathroom and shower, which is something I'm not willing to look past in the rig that I'm building. It has a kitchen and it's roomy, which is very important to me. Coming back from these big ocean adventures, I need room where I can put things out to dry, whether it's camera equipment or gear, and I need space to be able to work. So I think this is the right unit for the job. Being older, it's a little bit heavier than I was hoping, but that old one ton, she'll be able to handle the weight. I finally have the shop all cleaned out, so let's get the truck in there and start learning a little bit about this old Dodge. It was the first brand new off the lot truck I ever bought for a bush truck and I was so proud of it. It was diesel, four wheel drive, no more putting on chains and whatever. Boy, this was a big step up for me. And I brought it home and your grandpa built the deck for it. It took a while, it was in the shop for a month or so, but he did a real nice job and built a big skookum steel deck on the back and that thing was our workhorse. It hauled welders, fuel, all the tools, everything, back and forth to the bush every day. Plus two of us employees, me and one other guy at least every day. It's not a huge horsepower engine right off the start, but it can very easily be adjusted. It doesn't cost a big bout of money. I'm not too sure what they do, tweak the timing, maybe something with the injectors or whatever, but you can get big horsepower very easily out of that engine. And it's cheap on fuel. It's extremely efficient. Uh, that thing I could run when we were working way out of town, like two hour drive each way every day. That thing ran cheaper, fully loaded, than my Fowler's Dodge Dakota. M mind you, back then diesel was a little cheaper than gas, but still in all, that truck packed a hell of a load, two hours each way, and cheaper than that little gas pickup could run. It always amazed me. Like, it, it's a good efficient rig that way. It's a, a really good sound truck, like, and, and easy to work on. If it breaks down on you out there, your average guy with a little bit of mechanical knowledge can take a set of wrenches and really help himself out. A lot of these newer vehicles, boy, you break down out there, it's getting towed to Dodge or Ford or wherever. You're stuck in that shop for however long, and this old girl, you'll, you'll be able to fix her. Yeah, no, it's just a diesel engine, an alternator. Uh, that's, there's no electronics involved there whatsoever. Set of injectors, I mean, it's, it's just straightforward. Diesel mechanics, super easy, super reliable. The body is still in good shape. Like, you know, I mean, a little bit of corner rust down by the fenders and whatever, but overall it's good. And uh, I don't know, there's, there's some work you'll have to do there to get it up and going. It's last year in the bush. I just parked it in the shop and that was it. I never did any work on it. Usually every year I would do a certain amount of repairs, you know, front end work and stuff. And that never got done that last year. It got parked in the shop and it sat there for 14 years, undercover. That truck obviously sitting in the shop for 14 years was not something real. <laughs> necessary in my life you know it was yeah i'm more than happy to pass it on and proud to pass it on you know i'm a big fan it's like i love what you're doing and any way i can help it's going to be great yeah today's day one of actually getting the tear down going on this truck which is super exciting to get the ball rolling except for it's been getting down to like minus 15 every night which is a bit of a problem because we don't have a solution for our firewood situation yet so I've sent Mick out to see if he can scrounge up some firewood and we're gonna get started on this truck. Mick's on a job and he's doing pretty good cruising in the car with a trunk full of firewood. Whoa! -oh. If I want to film this properly, I really have to get some sort of lighting. Oh, Mick is back. Hey, bud. Hey, Mick. You sound grumpy. Do I have a reason to be grumpy? No. No. 
Did you get some firewood? I got some firewood. Well, would you mind starting a fire? I'll be out here for a few hours. <laughs> The plan originally was to get the truck mechanically sound, then take the box off. I think in the grand scheme of things, it's going to be better to get this deck off just to free up the room and start getting measurements. Wow, that's loud. Pretty interesting mixture of what looks to be factory and Grandpa Porter welds. <laughs> grandfather was a pretty interesting man. We're at the back of this deck. This whole box. The frame goes into the box and is welded to the frame. We're trying to cut around the frame into the box. Welcome to another episode of Destination Resurrecting Old Things. 
on the list today is tobacco. Okay. Would you take a look at the aft on that gal? Right? Look at this thing. No rust, no scaling. Clean. Yep. Nothing worse than a dirty aft. How was the teardown? Absolute nightmare. The old man had her welded up pretty tight, huh? Might have been easier to disassemble the truck. <laughs> Classic. Well, anything new for the list? Yes. Fuel pump. A little bit pricey, but there will not be a better time to do it. Rear airbags, steady bearing. Remove the catalytic converter. New muffler. Rear end pinion seal, and that should about do it for now. Then I shall get started on the parts. You keep that up, might have to put you on the payroll. Bud, your smile, <laughs> that's the only payment I need. Check it out. Yes, that is a formidable stack of boxes you have there. Aw, uh, yeah. And it looks like nothing from the list. Well, they didn't have any of that stuff. What is all of this? Well, I don't know. They had this all just sitting there. Something about like a front end sponsor or something. I don't know. Nick. an immediate bad start. Jeez Louise. Here's the big moment. See what shape this dowel pin's in. This right here, that's the dowel pin. What will happen is that will fall out into your timing gear and either it'll fall right down to the bottom and you'll be okay, 
or it'll bust out the side of the case. This looks like a pretty close call. This is how you fix it. Just this little, this little bracket here. Let me show you. This bracket will go right there. I can hardly believe just how much oil, dirt, and grease was caked onto the front of this thing. But I got all the components cleaned up, bolted on, and the motor sealed up again. And this is about as far as we're gonna get into this project this week, because I wanna leave everything open for the front end rebuild as well. This guy, talk about an early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. You realize in this situation, I would be the second mouse. Oh, so we both get cheese. No, you're the bird. You. Never mind. What are you doing out here? I mean, I saw the comment section. People are just begging for some more Mick. Just trying to give the people what they want. <laughs> you're giving them something. Yeah, I'm pretty much finished up here anyways. Got all the shots I needed. So none of this actually had anything to do with doing any work. Can't do her, bud. Don't work Sundays. <laughs> it's 7.30 in the morning on a Monday. This week's gonna be a good one. I can feel it. I've borrowed this funky press. Not entirely sure how to use it, but I think I have it set up here. We're gonna give it a little wrap, see what happens. It moved. All right, got a whole stack of adapters here. My buddy that lent me this offered to give me a hand. I'm always reluctant to take up people's time. I think maybe I should have said yes. Oh, geez. <laughs> Wrong way immediately. Pressing them in was way easier than pressing them out. And the new ones even came with a little rubber. Always wise to use a rubber, especially on an old gal like this. She's seen some miles. <laughs> Looking good. They both come with a grease nipple. Only the bottom one comes with a clip. And if you're wondering how accidents happen, go ahead and keep watching me try and put this clip on here. There we go. I don't want to put anything back on. This mantle has gone quite good so far, but we've run into a huge issue. That's where the seal is supposed to sit on the axle. It's totally destroyed. It's a thousand bucks for new ones. So I'm gonna remove the U-joints and see about getting it welded and machined. 
Driver's side is better, but not much. I'm very fortunate that my good buddy Sasha with SK Customs is a world-class TIG welder, mechanical engineer, and lives just down the road. He's fitting me in on a Sunday and we're fixing the axles. Not gonna lie to you, been dreading this particular job from the very beginning. Time to finally tackle doing the wheel seals. two keepers that hold on the bearing. These have to go back in the exact same spot. I've been recommended to actually mark them with a punch, but I can see they're already marked differently. So I just took a photo and then I'll be able to duplicate when I put them back on. Putting the driver's side seal in is supposed to be quite easy. You can just tap it in right here. I'm gonna have to get creative with that side. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to film that. Operation seal puller was a failure. Wrecked the seal. Well, the axle seals are finally in, but that job came with every bit of challenge I was expecting and more. See, the thing about living in the motorhome inside the shop is every day I look out that window and I can see this truck, which is actually pretty cool, except for for the last month, there's been more truck on the floor and in boxes than on the frame. So I've been waiting on hubs. These look good though. Comes with studs too. That's nice. Well, let's get this friggin' truck back together. Don't forget, this, these bearing caps have to go in exactly how they came out. Torque spec is 85 foot-pounds. tell you guys this front axle has thoroughly tested my patience it's going back together nicely I thought I had all my parts but putting the four-wheel drive actuator back on this is a vacuum actuator it slides back and forth and pulls the collar over to lock the intermediate shaft and the axle shaft 
The collar rides on two little plastic tabs. This one's broken off. I've ordered one, but it's three days out. At least I can continue with the rest of the truck, or at least the rest of the front end. But the axle will be sitting incomplete. One of the big challenges for brand new hubs and rotors is getting the wheel studs seated. I, when I did it on the motorhome, I was able to crank them down enough with my tire iron to get it seated. So I did the same thing on the truck. The only difference with the, between the truck and the moho is this big spacer. I'll crank this down as much as I can, but that's gonna be something I have to watch when I first get on the road, make sure this is not coming loose again. something in your rotor to torque this with the axle and that's 180 foot pounds going just a little bit past so I can get the cotter pin in You guys remember the day I took this truck for a drive and I commented about how terrible the front end was? Something I didn't diagnose throughout this is the sway bar. I just took a look at it, well I just took it off. Absolutely destroyed. Yeah, gonna need a new one of those. That's really on there. <laughs> You take a look at the undercarriage on that gal. Mm-hmm. Tight. So tight. I mean, I'd hope so. You've been working on it for weeks. Well, the shipping on these parts is taking forever, and I hate to say it, but uh, haven't had very much help. Yep. Hard to find good help these days, huh? I think you might have missed the point there, bud. Well, yeah, the whole shipping thing sucks too, but from a semi-non-professional such as myself, you're doing a pretty good job, bud. Keep it up, amigo. I wouldn't say I've forgotten how to put it back together, but I wouldn't say I remember.
Got some mail today. Steering box stabilizer. There's a ton of companies that make these things with a big price range, but they all do the same thing and it's a very simple job. So I ordered the cheapest one. I think it was like 94 bucks, maybe 97 bucks or something like that on Amazon. And build quality seems quite good. Fitment is not great, but not terrible. There's two tiny little Allen keys that hold the bearing collar onto the steering shaft. I don't know how critical their job is, but if you install one, don't forget to tighten them. At this point, somebody out there is probably saying, geez, that's a pretty unorthodox way to install a bumper. You're probably right, but I don't know how it's supposed to be done. Oh, geez. Nevertheless, that is a complete front end rebuild. It's time for this baby to finally come off the jack stands. This is the big moment, you guys. Maybe the biggest in history. <laughs> I know some history. Should have planned this a little better. <laughs> It'll take a while to fill with that little hose, but it will do the trick. You know what, I had skipped lunch today, so the siphon's a blessing in disguise. She's full. Now the key to starting any vehicle, old or new, it's the ignition key. <laughs> Not even a speck of oil coming out of her. Today's the day, Mick. Redemption day. Everyone's saying you're not a very good mechanic. My friggin' name is Mick Canic. Already been up, been to town. I'll have the whole back of this truck done before you're even out of bed, dude. Whew. Let's do it. Hey Mick, good job. Hey Mick, you're the best. Hey Mick. Mick! Uh. Huh. Huh. What are you doing, bud? Oh man! Whole piece missing. The old leaves were in really rough shape. They were a six leaf pack with a spacer and an overload. The new leaves are eight 
and then they sent airbags. The U-bolts are gonna ride right on top of the leaf pack. Let's see how hard it is gonna be to lift this into place. I hadn't really accounted for the fact of how sacked out the old ones are. I don't know if I can drop my axle far enough. Everything is fitting up nicely, except for the new U-bolts are not long enough. But we have a spring shop here in town, so I'll get both the leaf packs on, then whip into town and get new U-bolts cut. It's gonna work out fine anyways, because I don't wanna use the mounting hardware that came with the airbag kit. I wanna get something a little more heavy duty, so. I'll get everything cut at once. The whole, if it ain't broke, don't fix it plan has been a failure because it's broke. Unfortunately, the whole driver's side needs to be rebuilt. So I've ordered bearings. I have seals already, but the bearings won't be until tomorrow. Let's finish getting the leafs on and maybe look at some airbags. There's one side done. You guys, safety glasses. Jeez Louise. I shouldn't have tightened up everything so much over there because it doesn't allow me to move the axle to line up over here. I loosened the U-bolts and just pulled a little bit with this ratchet strap and it lined up nicely actually. Enough where I can get a bolt in here. Oh no. How the heck does that work? Oh man. I don't know if this job is doable without dropping the tank. Sure hope not. Well, I certainly hadn't intended on dropping the tank. But as you can see, it's no longer in the truck. I'm gonna turn this into a silver lining moment and swap out the fuel pump and then drain it, because this thing is super heavy. But I'm so strong, didn't even drop it. <laughs> Should be pretty straightforward. Certainly the worst directions I've ever seen. I have a sneaking suspicion this fuel pump is for a gas truck, not a diesel. As much as this looks like an in-tank fuel pump, it is not. The only thing that this does is tell you your fuel level. So the last three hours of my life, total waste of time. Look at that accuracy. Oh, the legs are burning. <laughs> Tomorrow, my bearings will be in, so I may as well get the hubs off and prep so tomorrow hopefully we can have a super productive day. Parts are all in, ready to murder the mechanical dance floor. 
I have a pile of work to do today. I'm gonna get six birds stoned with the same rock. <laughs> gonna be a good party. Better to leave your bearing too loose than too tight. So I'm gonna back it off a tiny bit. I'm gonna call that good. I couldn't source a new gasket for the axle, so I'm reusing the old one. Just gonna put a tiny smear of the right stuff on here to help it seal up. It's not the nicest looking job I've ever done, but it'll hold. Torque spec for these diff cover bolts calls for 30 foot pounds. I think that might be a bit much, so I'm just getting it snug with this shorter ratchet. This project has a special uh, place with me. Uh, one of my work colleagues, uh, Sheldon Souter, uh, a couple years ago brought to my attention your videos. And of course your, your subscribers uh, are all over and they want to see what BC looks like. And, I, and I've been to a lot of those places too. So I, I, this kind of had a special uh, place for me to watch for your Saturday releases. And then when you said that you were going to do a build, it can be a little bit complicated. I thought, well, that can be our contribution to this. I like what you're doing. I like your videos. And it's just something that uh, I think is the right thing to do. There's no blueprint for anything that we're doing here. Um, you just got to kind of come up with an idea and then put it into place, you know, fabricate around it. It's uh, definitely not something that we're used to doing, but uh, it's, uh, we're always up for a challenge. Started Stinger Welding in 1979, just with myself and a welding truck, and we've grown it. I've hired some very good people, have some very good people working for me, and grown it to what it is today. In the old days, I did a lot of bush work with a welding truck, and that's now transformed to uh, work for some large clients. Uh, we do a lot of field work. We have portable service trucks. Uh, we work for our electrical utility, BC Hydro. They're doing an expansion program all over the province. We, we have some specialty welders for them. We do virtually everything. Um, any kind of general fabrication. Uh, mainly we do bridges, that's our, kind of our bread and butter. Um, but we also do aluminum uh, pressure pipe welding. Yeah, we do quite a bit of large scale. But we'll do anything right down to, you know, just general stuff off the street. Wow, 
when I first reached out to Stinger Welding, I was only asking for help to install the camper. Unfortunately, that didn't end up being possible because of the damage we found on the camper. So this went from what should have been a pretty easy camper installation on the frame to kind of salvaging what I had. Once we got in, started looking at it, seeing the damage that was there, knowing that that's not gonna last over time, um, we needed to figure out a way to cradle it and you know, kind of girdle it and keep it, keep it together, keep it so it's gonna last for years to come. Well, there's a saying amongst the welders, we can fix everything but a crack of dawn and a broken heart. Something like this is very uh, rewarding and it's also uh, a challenging job. And I think that's where the one-offs is where we, we really excel, and this is a one-off, but uh, we treat this as a equally important job to all the rest of our jobs and our projects. Basically just building a frame that's going to encapsulate the bottom portion of the camper. Um, try and keep it, you know, keep it structurally sound. It's, it's obviously lacking in, in support and it has been for quite some time. Um, so yeah, what we're building is, is gonna hold it all together and support it, you know, regardless of where you go. The damage to this camper was a problem that I really didn't have a solution for. So getting to see this whole portion of the build come together was really fascinating and it felt great to finally have some professional help for a change. But that's not the only thing that makes this portion of the build really special. When I worked on cruise ships, I was very fortunate to make friends with people all around the world. And some of those friends are currently in the Ukraine. We all know about the challenges currently happening over in the Ukraine. And Stinger Welding has put effort into making a positive difference in the lives of some of the people stuck in that situation. As everybody seems to know at this time, there's a shortage of skilled tradespeople around with so much work that we've go had going on. So what I've been trying to do is reach out to the local Prince George Ukrainian group and finally connected and I had the opportunity to hire two of the fellas that I have now. And I hired them in last October and they've been with us ever since. There's been a bit of a challenging uh, communication issue but uh, we have the translation and they've picked up English very good way faster than I can do the Ukrainian. На Україні я закінчував технічний університет по спеціальності технологія машиностроєння. Работав на Україні на заводі сварщиком, зборщиком і потім поїхав в Польщу, так само там працював сварщиком і зборщиком. Тобто ми збирали по рисункам, обварювали ці деталі повністю. Those guys, uh, I mean, they're, it's definitely a, a language barrier, you know. Uh, obviously we're using Google Translate as much as we, much as we can, uh, but uh, yeah, these guys, they, they're, they're very well versed in what they do, regardless of the language. The language that we both speak is fabrication and welding. And uh, I think that, uh, that shows in the work that they do. Мне больше нравится собирать своими руками, нежели чем сидеть за компьютером и рисовать рисунки или чертежи. Поэтому мне больше нравится что-то производить. Так, у меня есть семья, жена и трое детей, но они пока что находятся на Украине. Я думаю, это хороший проект. Первый раз мы делаем такой проект, но я думаю, что мы его сделаем. И, может быть, в дальнейшем такие проекты пойдут и будут в будущем, как бы так сказать, реализовываться нормальная работа.
candidate truck for this build is a 1995 Dodge Ram 3500, but this is not a conventional pickup truck. This is a cabin chassis, so the frame is a fair bit longer than normal. So with that came the challenge of the trailer hitch because I don't go anywhere without my boat, but the frame ended right behind the rear leaf hanger. So we really needed another three feet of frame to get to the back of the camper and six inches of drop to get underneath the camper. Again, there's no blueprint for that. So it's just a matter of figuring out what we have to work with, uh, what we have to work around, and then fabricating as needed. We're gonna double up underneath the frame, bolt onto that, and then weld in uh, kind of a drop down frame that's gonna extend off the main frame above the axle. Today's the big day. We're actually gonna be mounting the camper onto the truck. Everything that Stinger Welding has built here has fit up incredibly well. So it should be as easy as just backing the truck underneath and lowering the camper. We're gonna find out. Yeah. I just put the jar of peanut butter away and I ran out of her house. Hey, Mick's here already. Mick, you cut holes in the cabinet door. My favorite part so far about this and what I was hopeful is just watching how the guys get to showcase their abilities because a lot of work we do, it never gets seen. All the guys are a little bit quieter, kind of like getting around the truck and coming to help wherever they need a hand and you can really feel the excitement and you know we're always production, production, production. Now we're kind of like having fun with this and you know that makes me feel really proud for them and being able to showcase what they have, right? We're a very unique shop with so much talent under one roof and their capabilities are endless. Basically it starts just measuring. Get a lay of it, feel it out, start pulling measurements and then Tyler does his thing and he starts, you know, he finds a model of the truck, model of the camper, meshes those two together, you start fitting things where they fit and it basically just starts to unravel. I think I always had a had the dream of, of being an engineer but also being really close to the shop floor. This project's different from a normal day with mainly how hands-on I get to be. I get to do the whole workflow, the design, cutting out the parts on the plasma table, bending them to the brake, 
and then helping with the welding and the assembly. So it's not often that I, I get to be on the shop floor. Something like this relies heavily on the CAD, so we have sheet metal software to model, in this case, model these, these cabinets. And the computer calculates all the bends and it, it exports a flat pattern with all your bend lines and your measurements and that goes to our fast cut plasma table. It cuts out the pieces, we take that to the brake, they get folded up and then it goes to welding and they get put together. The picture starts to get seen a little bit when it's on the computer and then pieces get cut out, pieces get bent, but then once you hold them up there then it really starts to come together. Yeah, it's just step by step. Trust the process, trust the people. Big faith in our process and knowing that, you know, any problem we run into, we figure it out. And we go from there. The, the fast cut CNC plasma table, it's, it takes whatever the computer tells it and cuts it perfectly every time. So if I can draw something up on the computer and I can see it in three-dimensional space and it fits and everything is, is set up perfect for clearances and for welding, you send it to the fast cut table and it, it cuts it out exactly as it is on the computer. It was really time consuming to build certain parts before because of the complexity of their shapes. So we were constrained to building parts with straight edges, no inner cutouts. Any part now we can design just by the click of a button, right? Everything we can build out of plate, we will. And that's where, you know, Tyler's brought a lot to the table with his designing in CAD and then being able to 3D objects, unfold the plate, send it to the plaza table, cut it, then it comes over. We have a drawing that says where all the bends are. Lay them out, bend them, weld them together. It has like, revolutionized the way that we work here. So everything was hand cut, everything was hand built. So it was a little bit more difficult to make things perfect. Now that we have the table, we have programs that help us hit the mark right on the money. Doing all those little cutouts and everything would take you 45 minutes to an hour for one piece. Now it's in the program, it comes out in five, 10 minutes. Right? And then you run it through the press and everything's perfect. Software will make more complex bends than what you can do with the sheet metal break. So you really have to keep that in mind. It's easy for me to get carried away with these unique shapes and it, uh, it's sometimes not always possible. It helps that I have an understanding of the 3D model and how things need to fit together, but it can be super confusing. We kind of use a one-to-one -one ratio. So you're, if you're forming a U, your flanges can't be any taller than the, the width between them. You really just have to know what you're building. You take a minute, you, you think about and you visualize all your bends because you can get to a point where you make the wrong bend and now you have to cut one of the flanges off and, and weld it because you don't have the clearance to, to do the remaining bends. So. Without the other guys, like I say, it would take 10 times longer. You know, Sean and Tyler run that table and without that, we'd basically be up a creek. It makes it a lot easier for a guy like me to come along and put it all together, fit it all together, and oh darn, it fits perfect. You've got a guy on the table, you've got a guy cleaning up, you've got a guy forming things, you've got a guy welding stuff out, you know, like it just makes everything so much more streamlined. It's, it's amazing now.
I got a lot of faith in Tyler and the guys, and I have to, right? I have to give them their leash to be their own creative and their own people, right? We don't micromanage. We put a lot of faith, and it's been very successful for us, right? And that's the same thing. I'll see the piece, I'm like, that looks weird. But all of a sudden, pin, 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 give them a little hand, and the next thing you know, there's a box, right? And every person's, you know, cutting, bending, and then welding. That's a well-oiled machine, and the next thing you know, the box comes out, and it just comes out so nice, yeah. We have people skilled in all different levels, all different trades. Having a diverse team of, of welders, mill rates, machinists, you, we can see a job through start to finish and everyone can have their input on it. And with good leadership, it all comes together. This project here would be done with TIG. It could also be done with MIG, but TIG's a lot cleaner more efficient, gives you a great uh, strength and uh, weld appearance. TIG welding is a form of welding. It can be used on aluminum, stainless, or mild steel. And you use a torch and a fill rod. So the torch conducts the electricity, makes your weld puddle, and then you add your filler rod into the weld puddle to produce a weld. Yeah. An electric arc is going to come out of there, but it's going to be the reverse shape of this. So it'll make like an hourglass, and at the end of that is like, it's like the sun is coming out of there. She's hot. It's straight electricity, right? And that is what is going to melt your your base metal, and you carry that along, and adding your filler metal as you go. You'll see the base metal melt, and then you'll see the actual filler rod melt and add into the weld and create a weld right as you're staring at it. Done correctly, four times the strength of a base metal. Yeah. TIG is very controllable. It is my preferred method of welding. In any case, I love TIG. This project, it's CNC cut, so the fit up's gonna be flawless, which it is. It's 1 8 aluminum. Yeah, it's a great project, man. There's different things you want to take into consideration for your heat and warping and stuff. You wrap your corners, never stop in a corner. You always want to weld into weld. And if you keep doing it and you back weld everything, it'll minimize distortion. You could even use a little bit of compressed air to help you out. And just take time. Don't rush anything. With this, yeah, I stress cleanliness. It's aluminum, it's really susceptible to everything. Uh, the plastic's too close, it's dirty, or you didn't wipe down something, ah, you're gonna get it. And then it's gonna create problems in your weld and you don't want it and you're trying to make everything look good. So keep it clean, move slow, keep your area clean. You get zapped once or twice doing a certain process. Stick welding, if you got wet gloves, you're gonna feel it. <laughs> Your hands will be sore by the end of the day, just from holding on to the stinger and all the current running through your hands and such. Being comfortable is, is it. You don't, you're not comfortable. Frustration builds so quick and you not even know, you don't feel like you're frustrated, but you are and it'll show in your work, yeah. Pretty big moment coming up here. We have to take the camper off to put in the large pass-through compartment. Didn't realize the camper would be coming off ever again. A little bit nervous. Should be fine.
sure if I'd describe the feeling as nervous or nauseous. Maybe a bit of both. First look at the cabinet installed. Feeling great, didn't even throw up. Look at that storage room. Hoo hoo hoo. All right, back in the shop. Got the A-team here, burning that weekend oil. The plan is to mount up the boxes. Sean, what, what day is it today? It's a big day. It's a big day. It's a bigger day. <laughs> <laughs> The truck was already an object. The camper was already an object. Meshing them together, that was a part of its own. Plus all the mechanical, but these boxes didn't exist. The normal day to day, we've got to be productive and we have to, you know, get the job done as fast as we can with the quality that we will always put out because our name is our quality, and that is what the town knows Harbor Machining for, is the top quality that you can get. This is a little different because we're not working on a budget, right? We get to use our design flair, and we love to make stuff as fancy as we can. But lots of times our time constraints and budget constraints don't allow us to use our full potential, so this project will have a, you know, lasting effects on everything else we do because we're able to get a little bit more creative and do that and work through the kinks that we wouldn't normally have time to on other jobs. Going forward, we're more confident in scoping out a job or pricing a job to the point where we know that we did it and we can keep moving forward with that and be efficient at it. So I think this is, this is good for everybody. Just after 4.30. I would say mission accomplished. Gentlemen, tremendous job today. <laughs> Big day, buddy. Big day. Big day. I enjoy the fabrication end of these type of projects. They're not just building a simple box. It's an entire set of box that goes with a camper and a truck. Like, that's what intrigues me. It's kind of sort of like putting a puzzle together, right? instead of just building a square box that fits in to one place. Like this is multiple boxes with multiple things running in the way and it's all working around it. That's kind of the part that I enjoy. It's, it's a workhorse. That's what that truck was designed for. That's what you guys used it before and now you're just, it's going into its golden years, I'm gonna admit. Like it, you're gonna not run it too hard, but when you get into that situation where you do have to use four-wheel drive or go over some lumpy stuff you have that ability now I don't feel the weight is too crazy on it you know the aluminum box is definitely a great idea because that would add it a lot more weight so I feel the weight is good and it's gonna ride nice I think it's a good combination for what it is it really ties it together though like you know you get the truck and the camper and that's in and these are all big steps for you like you know, you first you get the deck off, 
and that's a big step. And you know, and I see that with our progression job, every step is so big to seeing your vision, right? And this is, this one is so exciting because it ties all of it together, right? But then it also opens up your mind to when you are adventuring, what you can bring and how you can organize it, right? And you have room for growth too, right? You're going to find more stuff that you need. So, you know, what you are right now isn't what you're going to be in a year because look at how you evolved over the last two years. That's the best part of the job, is looking at a finished product and being able to stand back and say, yep, I did that. That's the good part, that's the, the gratification. Yeah, I've always been a hands-on worker. I like seeing the finished product at the end. I don't like just handing stuff off to other people because then they get all the glory. You know, I, I want that glory. I did all the work, I want to weld it, and by the end, it it's beautiful, you know? It's a very nice feeling. I think the Expedition truck's gonna be quite the rig. Uh, you have more than enough storage, it'll be reliable, and it's, yeah, it's, it's gonna be really cool. A head turner. It's going to be absolutely amazing. You're going to have to wear sunglasses around. It'll be so shiny with that much aluminum. And the doors and cabinets, it's going to look pretty boss. Well, I'm excited for it. I think a lot too when Mike sits down and watches the video, you know, he was out of town for a week, but he, and he goes down, I feel like he's going to feel so proud of what he's built and the men that he's, you know, he's raised a lot of these men. So, I think he's going to be super proud of it. And, you know, even myself, I'm really proud just watching, you know, their passion come out and they're teaching you things and they're teaching each other, each other things, but there's, you know, we're not constrained on this one. So that everything is just, you know, easy flowing and good and you get to really see everyone's personalities and their skills and they can shine, right? So it, it's definitely been really exciting for me. You're going to be able to go a lot more places than uh, you could with the motorhome. And I think that that's important uh, to a lot of places you want to go, is uh, a smaller unit. And you just drop your trailer somewhere and uh, you can go where you couldn't go before. I think it's going to be exactly what you need. You'll have tons of storage. I think a little more than you actually originally planned. It's going to be just a good all-around unit for for getting in. If you need to go into a, you know, an off-road place, you can definitely do it with this. So. Yeah. It'd be a lot more versatile than the motorhome, that's for sure. You've got the experience, you can fix your truck now on the side of the road. I guarantee you that when you're traveling uh, in the Arctic or tucked Arctic or the Northwest Territories that our portion of the job isn't going to fail. So that's uh, what's important. You won't have your trailer hitch fall off. So this, as I said, uh, this is a unique project for us and we do one-offs and we're pretty happy to participate in this. Blue collar people that really enjoy that, you know, 20 to 30 minutes every Saturday for what you bring. Just want to give back and want to help. You know, it really showcases our people and how tight knit we are and we take care of our own and we want to see everybody succeed. And the thing is we could work hand in hand if we need it, right? Any one of them could come to our facility and we would pick up and just, because we're all working on the same thing to get this cool expedition truck out the door and making us videos so we can continue on, right? The yeah, whole province comes together just the same. You know, over a YouTube channel that, you know, we've learned that everyone is pretty infatuated with and it's, it's a part of our lives now. Over the past five months, this truck build has taught me the true meaning of the phrase blood, sweat, and tears. But the truck came out better than I ever imagined, and I couldn't have done it without all of you. The viewers, the sponsors, the patrons, my family and friends. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Now let me give you the first tour of the finished truck. Traveling in Canada, the land of the moose, lighting is important and Novsight hooked me up with an awesome light system. And these three inch lights are crazy bright. The pass-through compartment is really the brains of the operation. 
This is where the outboard is stored and on a very functional bracket. In the center are my six volt deep cycle batteries and these power the house. They're maintained by 400 watts of stick on solar and a 40 amp MPPT charge controller supplied to the build by Bouge RV. And after a month of full time living in the rig, I can tell you these things are efficient. Beside the batteries is the diesel air heater, which heats the storage compartment as well as the living quarters. I installed an onboard air compressor for the airbags, which is controlled from inside the cab. And finally, a 2000 watt dual fuel smart generator sent by EcoFlow, which is the lifeblood of my battery system inside, but we'll get to that shortly. The double door compartments are just for general storage and organized by basic industrial shelving. The driver's side drop down compartment is for parts, tools, oils, and fuel. And on the passenger side will become an outdoor kitchen, but for this year, I am out of time. The rear compartments hold hoses, cables, as well as the Starlink. And when in use, the Starlink will be mounted on a tower at the back of the rig. Hemiway hooked me up with the Cobra Pro long range full suspension e-bike, which should be able to take me pretty much anywhere the truck can't. And of course, I don't go anywhere without my Swellfish Classic 470, riding on a completely overhauled trailer, thanks to Stinger Welding. Inside the living quarters, it's mostly a stock camper with some very neat upgrades. I've updated the water system and plumbing. All of my interior power needs are met with the EcoFlow Delta Pro and River 2, which are charged from the smart generator outside, but wired into the camper. EcoFlow has also provided me some luxury in a battery powered air conditioner, the Wave 2 which is installed above a brand new Dometic three-way fridge and both utilize the fridge vent on the roof. This rig is small, but it's practical, it's reliable and it's efficient. And it provides me everything I need to be comfortable and able to produce this show pretty much anywhere in the world. I'm very proud and very excited to say we are officially ready to hit the road. Thank you for your patience. And thanks so much for watching everybody. Now let's whip it. Are you ready for the comeback? You know we the ones that ready for whatever. We gon' have to show them some man. Let me see them hands up all the way from back. You don't understand that I'm doing what you can with no cap. Ha! This is the return of the one. You ain't see him coming, you just heard drums. They've been ready for the battle. Any person that comes got the weight of the world on them. Yeah, they're too strong. I might have been down, not out. It's on sight, you gon' figure that out. And I might have been down, not out